Hi everyone, App Inventor Teacher back again with a bubble sort tutorial this time. Um, basically, a bubble sort is an algorithm, an algorithm for sorting values in a list or elements in an array or whatever. Um, here we have my implementation, which we're going to end up building. And what we're going to do is um, reorder this list. So if I click the Start Sorting button. What we'll see in a bubble sort is that the biggest number in a set, we're going to sort this in ascending order by the way, so the biggest number will be at the bottom, so 4, 7, 6 will be at the bottom, number 2 will be at the top, then 6, then 32, and then 40. So the idea is that list, after clicking the button, is in sorted order. So that's what we're going to try and achieve. Um, I strongly suggest that if you want to look for the theory behind, if you're not sure, that there is a great tutorial here by this guy Jackson Steenkamp at Harvard University. Um, I'll put the link for it in the uh, text below so go and check that out first and it'll give, he'll give you a great a really great introduction into bubble sort and how it all works so that you don't have to worry about too much about uh, the theory side of it. We're going to look at the implementation side of it and what I've done here is I've just basically created a screen with a a list view element inside it here. Uh, set the height to two, 320 pixels and uh, the width is automatic across the top. I've got two buttons, one to start sorting, one for new random numbers and I've put a notifier in uh, just for, we'll see later on that we might want to um, send some messages to the screen. So basically that's the setup, so if you want to copy that, go ahead and do that. Um, I've called my button start and my new random numbers button, new random numbers. Okay, so if you've re looked at the uh, tutorial, the, the Harvard University tutorial, you'll see that basically the bubble sort works by comparing numbers with the one next to it. So if I were to sort this list here, let's imagine that we've got a list, three, two, one of, of numbers. Um, what we would do is we would set it up so that we compare the, the first number in the list to the next number in the list here. And if this one here, the second number is less than this one here, we're going to swap them around. This is to sort the list in ascending order. So what we'll do is, in ascending order, we'll put that there. And you'll see that the big guy, number three, is heading towards the right, which is the bubble effect. So we've swapped um, those two round. So we're now into this second position here, and we're going to swap the three and the one. So one is smaller than three or less than three, so we'll move that away and swap them. And now you can see with one pass through the array, we've uh, nearly got the numbers sorted. So let's try again. This time we'll look at position one, compare it position two. Yeah, position two is less than that, so we move them, swap them. And we, uh, we could look at the next one as well. We can see that uh, this one here is in fact bigger, so there's no need to do a swap. So with three elements in the array or in the list, we only needed to do two swaps. That's a very important part of, of the algorithm, something that we'll come to later on. They call it n minus 1. If you imagine the list being n number of elements, then the number of times we need to pass through it is the number of elements minus 1. And it works for any number of elements. So let's get around to coding this. Um, if I just expand these blocks. What I've done is, there's my three little numbers, pop those over there out of the way for now. Is I've created, as you know, a, you can see it on the designer screen, a generate random number list. So all I've done there is um, created a global items variable, which is a list and we're just going to set it to five random integers just using the random integer function. So, um, and then I'm going to set the list view elements to global items. Uh, global swap counter, forget that for now, I'm going to come back to that later on. But basically we're going to set the elements of the list to these five random integers and that's how we start things off. Now that's called when the screen is initialized and when I click on the button, so it happens right at the start as well. So let's get those out of the way because to be honest we don't really need that for what I'm about to teach you. So uh, let's leave those there for now. Actually, no, I won't. I'll collapse those. OK, so tidying the screen up a little bit. So when the Start button is clicked, 
let's have a look at what we're going to do. Well, let's start at the, the core functionality first of all. What we're going to do is we're going to see if, let's just put this back out of order again. We're going to see if the number in the second position is less than the value of the element in the first position here. Once we've done that and uh, done the swap, we're then going to pro process the second position here with that one there. So if you, as you can see, we're processing through each element in the array one at a time. Now, luckily for us, there's a little control option here called for each number, which I'm going to steal and use to help with this, which allows us to check these, uh, to go through these one at a time. And the number value here basically is the position we're pointing to. So it starts off at one from one uh, and will finish at three in our case. So from one to right. In here, we have to put the length of the list, take away one. Now, if you remember, the list is n minus one from that video, Jackson Steenkamp's video. So what we need here is the length of the list and the list we want is to um, get global items, that one there, minus one. So that takes us through that part. So that gives us the n minus one that we were talking about earlier on. So now we need to do this check to see if this value in the second position is first and that is greater than the value or less sorry less than the value in the first position and to do that we need our less than symbol which is over here and we're going to see you to set that to less than the value in right in the list now we need to select that from the list and the list we're looking for is global items excuse me for a second I just lost the plot um, the list is global items so get global items and we want to look in position where we currently are indicated by number that's our index position and one ahead of it so we're going to check to see if the one ahead of it is less than where we currently are so one ahead of that we need to put a plus in there so the current number plus one um, and that gives us one ahead. So in this list, little list down here, we'd be looking at the number two. I'm going to compare it where we where we currently are. So what I'll do is I'll just copy that lock, pop that in there. And all we want to do now is check, to get rid of that bit now. So there we have the. The, the, the really important part, this is the checking part. This will uh, allow us to put the ascending order, and in fact it could be you know descending as well, but we'll be looking for, for uh, ascending order here. So the next important part is, is to look at what's gonna happen. If the one that is, in other words, if this condition is true, I basically want to swap them. Now, there is a problem here. If I move that number into that position there I'm gonna lose the first number so I can't just overwrite that this is the cool part what I need to do is to move it into a temporary space move that one across and then move that one back and the way we do that I'm gonna do that if I just show you is I'm creating a temporary variable to store this guy into and I've got it over here it's global temp so what we're going to do is we're going to set global temp to the position that's of the item one ahead of us. So this one here, in fact, I'll just do a duplicate of that. So what that's done is saying, okay, that is item here, number two, is less than three. So let's move it into a temporary variable. That now allows us to replace this item, this index position here, with the one from the first position. And that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so we go to lists and we're going to go to replace, so I can find it, there it is. So we're going to move that underneath here now. And the list we're looking at of course is global items, so um, let's pop that in there. 
we're going to replace the one in this position ahead of us okay and we're going to replace that we're going to replace um, this one here we need to select this item here now so we can replace it with this one so in order to pick this one out of the list we need another select replace it with the one in our global items list replace it with the one that we're currently looking at so that will move this selected item up by one okay so we're nearly there all we need to do now is get this uh, out of the temporary variable and put insert it back into or replace it into the list there so to do that we need another replace I'm going to zoom out here um, and let's just duplicate that okay so what we need to do here is replace the item in the um, so let's just get rid of that the item in the list so that's because we want to move it into the first position so back to there which number is uh, set to one at the moment because we're only going through this for our first time and replace that with our temporary variable let me just delete these and the temporary variables let's just go there and get the temporary variable get global temp okay so that's the core of it done so our list now looks like this with the two and the three swapped round here two and the three swapped round so the next time we go through number is set to two so we're now looking at this position here and um, we're going to do the check to see if the one ahead of it is less than it it is so we move that into the temporary variable we move that across to the plus one and we move that into that position there so that will work all the way through to the end of the list end of the list minus one which is two times and that's where it stops that loop but as you can see we clearly don't have a sorted list what we need to do is to do that whole process at least two more times and to do that we need to restart with another four each so we put a pop another four each in there and that allows us to go through it n minus one two times so we do that like this by popping that straight in there um, if you've read if you've looked at um, this video here you'll you'll understand why we only do this n minus one times uh, again we only need to do it because the first time through the biggest number always bubbles to the end so two times and that is it that's the the core of a bubble sort so next time round um, basically we start with two uh, one is less than two it goes in the temporary variable two is moved across and swapped one goes back into the current position um, we do a check again is three less than two no it's not we don't do anything and there we are n minus one we've done it two more times um, so the list is sorted it's already done it's not the most efficient way of doing it um, because if you follow this through you'll see that we actually do a number of unnecessary repetitions however there's one thing left to do here all I'm going to do is set the list view elements to our sorted list so that we can see the output on the screen so let's get our uh, global items list and pop that in our list view so we have some output to look at just to check and see if it's working okay so if I go back to my emulator get some new random numbers and click on start sorting there we are our sorted list I didn't mention the new random numbers button but actually I think I might have done right at the start but really all it does is call my procedure to generate the random number list and that's all there you go if you've enjoyed the video and learnt something from it please put a like on the video for me um, and of course if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe um, okay thank you ever, ever so much for listening and see you soon bye